making a quick wort with 200 grams of light dry malt and two liters of water that should make about four percent anyway i now harvested it from scooping it at high krausen 50 50 london fog and nipa yeast right let's come to ball now we'll chuck in some yeast nutrient just come up to room temperature ready to be added in two one and a half liter containers that i'll fill up one liter each let's go Yeast nutrient is going to be this Cooper's Brewing Yeast. We'll chuck that in for about a 10 minute boil. That'll give it plenty of goodness. Oh, look at it foaming up. Woo! Alright, we'll chuck that in there. And then basically every hour or two, give it a stir. Oh, we, should, we should probably turn that off. It's pretty hot today already. So yeah, just 10 minutes to basically kill this. We don't want that to come alive in our ferment. And we're going to cool that down. Stick it in there. All right, it's been uh, 10 minutes. We'll take this off the heat. That way. And stick it on some water cool that down good to go it's still this pot I don't want anything going in there to contaminate it we just want to cool that down to 30 degrees and we'll be good the yeast this is now down to a not so hot temperature we made this not quite but yeah it's cranking along it was good yeast but this is gonna help grow some more yeast I'm just give it a stir I live in a lounge so I see it and give it a stir each time I see it you just see it build up in the bottom there and you also want to keep it out of the light so just cover it up with something Again, 
still got quite a bit of krausen. Good layer of yeast in the bottom. Let's do that in again. See that's really starting to clear up now, really settle out. About a centimetre layer of yeast in the bottom now. So it's looking really good. And the krausen's pretty much gone. Foam on top. So that's looking good. I'm actually not going to mix these back in. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go put these in the fridge. It's been about two days two days and so we'll chuck these in the fridge and cold crash them help this really settle out and yeah see you soon right well here's my yeast fridge which gets turns into a cold drinks fridge we'll just chuck those in there for around 18 to 24 hours yeah so we just want to really gather all the yeast in the bottom this is the part we're wanting to keep and that's basically like beer, flat beer. We're gonna just tip that off, leave, leave a little bit, help mix it all back to a liquid. And then that's gonna be our good yeast. Well, I've got some more of these, which I've sterilized. You can see as it mixes back in. Yeah. Got some more of these, which I've sterilized, which I'm gonna store some of this yeast in. So that'll give me some more stock of yeast. Because I think, <coughs> Going for a memory, probably makes about 200 milliliters, and this looks like it may have even produced even more. Um, so it might have about 300 milliliters of yeast, which is in great condition. And I mean, most fresh yeasts are only about 40 milliliters, and you might want to use one to two packets. So 80 milliliters of this good yeast. So you will have plenty to save, plus have tons to pitch. So we good. So that that's 50 milliliters, the whole thing. So in there is actually says on there, it's just shy of 20 milliliters of good yeast. So that's kind of like buying one packet of liquid yeast from from the store. quite like as you can see the this is a large yeast and you can see that it goes crystal clear like there's basically no yeast in there that's really all, all the amount you need to actually save if you're going to make starters like this it's just a tiny amount of yeast and then you mix that with that and you'll produce yeast if it doesn't produce enough do it again and collect that do another starter so the, the one we just made that from had a little bit more yeast than this. Not quite that much, it was probably about half that. So it worked really well. Cool, I think it must be about beer o'clock. Oh, it's pretty easy to get carried away with collecting yeast. Uh, sometimes, this was, it's always good to label them too, but they do get pretty old. You can use this as yeast nutrient in your boil, if, if you want. I mean, I've got actual bought, brought um, yeast nutrient, but quite often um, I've just tipped some of this into the. Uh, so that was this type of yeast. It's just like the whole uh, the leftovers. 
and the fermenter. Without the hops. Some of these have got oil overdue. That one's frozen. Yikes. We've got a couple of frozen ones there. So I think we'll work them out. Probably still. Should I make a video? I'll, I'll store this. Let me know in the comments. Should I make a video and seeing how this yeast turns out? I'll defrost it and see if we can make a beer from it, eh? Let me know in the comments. I'll keep it in there. Why not? These are both the same yeast too, so that could make an interesting video. See if <laughs> it's drinkable. Yeah, that one looks like it's infected. This is old. Very old. That's definitely infected, so we'll toss that. Jeez. Didn't even know I had this. That's a nice clear looking a bit of infection. We'll toss that. These can probably all be tossed. Back some fridge space. Right. Check out my other video on making an all grain beer if you like. Um, that's the, this starter I've made here is actually for a New England IPA which I'm making. Uh, <laughs> Put a link to the to the video in the description. Check it out. All right, yeast. Ooh. Ooh, all right. It's the next day. She's been in here about 24 hours. Let's have a look. So she's still super hazy because it's a hazy um, yeast. But we've got a good layer yeast in the bottom. We could leave this longer, but I want to pitch it. And I've got plenty there. So we'll take this in the kitchen. Go from there. We've got these uh, juice bottles, which we also use for um, baby milk. Just put boiling water in them. Um, it's what you'd want to mix with your yeast that you harvest, uh, boiled water. And here that's sealed, I know that's sterilised. I'm happy with that, it's had boiling water put in it. So I'm going to put my yeast into this. Now another thing also learned from uh, Dr. Hands Facebook page is always taste your starter. So. Technically this should be like beer, so if it tastes really bad, the yeast's probably really bad. I mean that's drinkable. It has a few little off flavours, but it's not like sour or really bad, like oh my gosh, I don't want to drink that. A little bit sweet. So yeah, pretty pretty happy with that. So I'm happy to, to use this one. So we want to tip basically all of this one out. And then in the next one, after we taste that, I'm going to leave a little bit of this liquid so that I can stir both of these together. Oh, happy that's good. Let's try this other one. I mean, yeah, that is like a nice fruit drink, almost. Pretty good, so. I just want to tip this off. And then you'll see it just about start to come out. I'm just going to stop there. Get rid of as much as we can. Well, at least one of them. So basically, there's just that. That's what we wanted to keep. So this is day three. Two days fermenting. And one day cold crash. So that one, I'm going to leave a little bit more liquid in. We're just going to have to stir this up.
what I like to do is weigh these and figure out how much yeast I actually got. That's sort of how I do the measuring. Or put it side by side with water and fill the container back up with water. So that's mixed in nicely. And I just add it into this one. You can buy proper glass containers, but these are old coffee jars. Super useful, easy to use. I mean, you don't have to decant that off, but that, that would put the ABV up. But if there's any off flavours in this, which there isn't in this one, no. Pretty happy with that. I've had them before. I think if you stir them too much, they get off flavours. But um, yeah, as you saw, I only saw it, stir this about two or three times a day. And I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out. Let's get that all mixed in, and then there's your sterilised. You could put this in. Um, star sand if you wanted but I'm happy this has been through the sterilizer in steam for 10 minutes and then boiling water so it's all good just gonna put it all into here and we'll have a good look at how much we've got I'm gonna be pitching about 80 mils of this today on my New England IPA you can check out the other link the, the other video You can check out the video for that in the link in the description. There we go, we got there. So that's fairly nice yeast. Pretty happy with that. Chuck it on the scales. So that's 360 grams. We'll say that that's empty. It's 180 grams roughly 187 so we've got about 180 mils from I would have guessed about 20 mils of yeast so that quite effective so we'll probably pitch if it's 180 probably pitch half of that about 90 mils because it should be about a six percent beer maybe more seven percent We want quite a bit of yeast in there, and the rest will be in storage for the next brew. One final thing before putting it away is you can get a label maker or something. I just use white tape or any, any tape you can write on with a sharpie, and just slap that on the side. Just electrical tape, whoop. Eventually sticks even when it doesn't dry out. Even though it's wet. And then write on the date and what yeast it is, because they disappear in the fridge, as you've seen earlier. So we are the fifth. First twenty two New England IPA yeast. It was a fifty fifty. So did a starter. Hopefully, I remember what that means. <laughs> can also do these are the old ones just peel the old sticker off put that on and that's kind of what I did on this USO 5 so now you got a bit of a history of what's happened <laughs> it's 
sweet. Oh, we'll see this being pitched in my other video, a New England IPA. Check that out. Links in the description. Cheers for watching. Thank you.